Tony Scania is a former covert operative. He's now with the multi-operational security agency intelligence company, better known as Mossack. He joins me now. So thank you for, uh, for, for joining us. Such an attack in Brussels could have happened anywhere. Can you make them feel any better? Unfortunately not, uh, Richard. This really could happen anywhere, including uh, London, where I'm sitting right now. Uh, just about every city on the planet is vulnerable, um, not just about every city is vulnerable. Okay, so um, with that sort of somewhat pessimistic um, but realistic view, uh, what is the solution here? It's, it's going back to basics when it comes to intelligence reports that are already available. Who are the perpetrators, who are possible perpetrators in that area? Unfortunately, uh, Abdus uh, Salam was um, in an area where he grew up and uh, other perpetrators that you know orchestrated the Paris crimes the Paris murders um, were also in that right. same area and, and that is unfortunate but hang on a second I mean I can hear viewers saying tonight it is breathtaking that months after Paris following on from this uh, uh, this arrest on Friday where you know that that an atrocity of this nature can take place in in Brussels, beggars belief. Yes, it's it's horrendous. I mean, uh, the fact that these perpetrators weren't uncovered before these horrendous attacks. I mean, that is an, a serious intelligence failure. Are, are the intelligence operatives are they seriously behind the curve at the moment in dealing with ISIS? In any city, it's a difficult situation. If you looked at London, for example, in order to prevent an attack would really require a million spies, a million covert operatives on the ground. Um, London's a very surveilled city, but without manpower on the ground, it's really a, a very difficult task. Yes, we are behind the curve. You know, when you're operating in a war zone like Iraq, you expect this to happen. When you're, you know, operating in your own backyard and there are COVID operatives living in between the public, it's very difficult to find them and flush them out. Um, really, Anna, you know, it needs to go back to analysis and the scrubbing of intelligence reports. Sir, thank you for joining us from London tonight. We appreciate it. Let's bring in Tony Sheena, an expert on counterterrorism and for former covert operations and special forces trainer. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Thanks, John. Does it all sound plausible? Berezovsky was Putin's number one enemy, and Litvinenko was tasked to assassinate Berezovsky at one stage. And uh, Litvinenko eventually came to turn on uh, Vladimir Putin, said he was corrupt, uh, that he was running a little fiefdom in Russia, and he also made this, uh, this, this charge of, of him being a pedophile on the side. Yeah, I mean, he, he defied Putin, and uh, he... Uh, basically befriended Berezovsky and, and helped his cause, which was, you know, he was a great enemy of Putin's government and at one stage wanted to, you know, overthrow an, an attempted coup on the Russian government. And that's how he became Putin's number one enemy. Um, the, the case with the, uh, regarding the pedophilia, now that, that is a, a dirty charge and often used in the espionage world that I know nothing about. Right, well, but, but the, the British are not able to say with absolute certainty uh, that Vladimir Putin ordered this hit. But they're saying that it is highly likely. I, I suppose that kind of thing you're not likely to find, you know, text messages, phone calls, and that sort of thing. But they say with a high degree of certainty, uh, the man on the right of the screen there, Vladimir Putin, was involved. Yeah, I mean, polonium-210 was the radioactive poison used. And it does leave breadcrumbs, which uh, apparently leads all the way back to the Kremlin. Um, being an enemy of the state and an enemy of Putin's is, is puts you in a very vulnerable position as being one of the most powerful men in the world. You don't really want to be in his crosshairs. You know, we've seen it before with Nemstov. We see it now, you know, we saw it later with Litvinenko. And we've seen it with Berezovsky, who, you know, who also died uh, two years ago under suspicious circumstances. So it, nothing would surprise you when it comes to Putin? Yeah. <laughs> You know, I, I always say, if you're in the crosshairs of really any intelligence organization on this planet, your days are numbered. But tonight, disturbing new allegations about the use of chemical weapons. On a base near Mosul, Iraq, Kurdish fighters show their scars. Oh. In this video sent to CBC, 
They describe what they believe was a chemical attack by ISIS in August. There is a gassy smell. It was like rotten garlic onions uh, and, and a gassy smell. Photos, allegedly taken just days after, show raw blistering. The men had diarrhea and wanted to vomit. But this man, Tony Skiena, was there. He's a private military contractor working in Iraq. No, there were not, no fatalities, but there were, um, I mean, the lesions and, and burns were, uh, as you could see in those photographs, were pretty horrific. When I, when I saw him, this is now 25 days later, you know, there's a lot of coughing, some can't walk properly. Skiana says he was escorted to the front lines by the head of Kurdish intelligence. He met with a combat medic, whom he says pleaded for help. There's been breaking news in San Diego, California. Reports of an active shooter at the Naval Medical Center. A witness heard three gunshots. Joining us now, Tony Sheena, special ops trainer and former law enforcement. Uh, Tony, it's good to talk to you. Um, if there is an active shooter on the premises, what's the likelihood that they could escape undetected? Well, that depends on how quickly law enforcement uh, reacts to the situation. In, in this case, law enforcement was there, SWAT teams moved in, uh, they did a thorough sweep, normally a systematic search, you know, going, making sure you're not uh, kind of avoiding any rooms, missing any rooms where an active shooter could be hiding. Uh, the fact that they could escape uh, out of the other side is, is a probability. This is Tony Sheena, owner of Mosaic Security, a private military company that provides elite forces level security for their clients. The main issue with this client is we need to pick him up at point A, the airport, and deliver him to his meeting at the military installation. But there's no circumventing this. These guys should be flanking on each side. Okay, he's already seen a potential shooter. Considering the police claim 25 people are shot in this barrier a day, the armed person they spotted was not taken lightly. Come, come, come. This is the wrong place to be. Fall out, guys. Okay, let's go. We took a little detour looking for a, an additional route out the main road because it was too dangerous. You have to wonder if the next military superpower won't be a country, but a corporation. I think the PMC of the future can manipulate governments. We're at a stage now that I think it can happen. In the odds, the National Sheriff's Association has enlisted three of the most highly trained ex-military operatives in the world. Their leader is Tony Sheena, a former Special Forces covert operative with 15 years experience in deadly conflicts throughout the globe. I'm in there. I want kinetic energy to go through his freaking skull. The team's mission, bring military and special ops tactics to sheriff's departments fighting on the front lines of this new war. 